Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week, I thought it might be fun to follow up on a previous post, uh, number 59, where I talked to you about um, chrysalis formation, also known as pupation or enclosure. So here's the monarch chrysalis that uh, we watched form. And I want to talk to you about what happens inside a chrysalis, at least what we know about, and um, e-closure or the emergence of the adult butterfly and share some video of the female monarch that um, I had emerge at the store. So before we talked about enclosure, um, which is the fifth instar caterpillar, uh, shedding its exoskeleton one last time and forming the chrysalis. So monarchs remain in the chrysalis state for about one to two weeks, uh, eight to 14 days. My female emerged on day 11 after um, pupation, and that's pretty temperature dependent. The warmer it is, the faster uh, that progresses. And during that time, there are a lot of changes that are happening inside the chrysalis. So I just want to say a special thank you to my friend, Denny Brooks, for sharing some good information um, about this topic. It was hard to find and uh, sharing some great images from past presentations he's done to, to help illustrate what we're talking about. So inside the chrysalis, it's not just mush, uh, as is often taught or um, put in uh, common literature. Uh, it is very soft, tender, easily damaged tissue. And if the chrysalis falls um, during that kind of soft period, it will splatter. Um, but once it hardens, it can sustain a fall of a few feet, usually um, undamaged. In some butterfly species, the chrysalis is extremely active. So examples would be red admirals and painted ladies. Uh, their uh, chrysalids are just super active. They'll move when something touches them. Um, even after that outer um, layer has hardened. So mush wouldn't move like that. Uh, there is structure to be able to move in a coordinated way. Um, first to hook the cream master tightly into the silk and then um, and knock off that old skin. And uh, second to be able to knock off or discourage um, by, by, you know, threatening movements, uh, parasitoids or predators that might harm the chrysalis. Once the chrysalis hardens, it's easier to see uh, some of the features of the adult butterfly as they're forming. So you can see with this diagram, there's the cream aster, which is the dark part hooked into the um, silk pad. And there are abdominal segments that will become um, that part of the adult butterfly. There are wing sacs, also known as wing pads. The antenna are the outer lines that you can see, followed by um, the legs. And then the inner lines are the two parts of the proboscis, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then down at the bottom, you can see the adult eyes forming. The chrysalis can't see, but those adult compound eyes um, are developing. And that brings me to the concept of imaginal discs. As the monarch egg develops, even at the very early stages, there are populations of cells that uh, develop that are eventually going to be adult epidermal structures, things like the legs, the wings, the eyes, and the antenna. Um, 
And these groups of cells form sac-like structures that are known as imaginal discs. And that word comes from um, the term imago, which is the uh, another name for an adult, uh, fully mature insect or butterfly. So these clusters of cells are destined to differentiate and become adult structures during metamorphosis. But that's initiated in the egg, and those cells are present um, in the larva as it develops. So um, these cells will undergo kind of final steps of differentiation and development um, in, the, in the chrysalis. Researchers are continuing to define how these clusters of cells um, are directed to become specific adult tissues and how they relate to different organs and tissues in the larval stages um, of development as well. So I think that's just amazing that the um, egg contains cells that are differentiating to become larval organs and some that are differentiating to become adult organs. So these imaginal discs um, continue to grow and differentiate through the larval stage and then during the pupil stage they will rearrange and develop further. So in some cases, uh, the cells will form adult structures um, that are present in the larval stage, but they just don't start changing, um, differentiating until that pupil stage. The adult compound eyes are an example. Those form from cells that are behind the larva's eyes. So during metamorphosis, a portion of the tissues of the caterpillar are self-digested into a nutrient soup, and that helps nourish uh, the growing and maturing adult organs. So especially muscles, uh, those tend to, certain ones tend to degenerate uh, completely and rep be replaced by new muscles that will allow for new adult stage movements. So the larva move very differently than adults, and then those muscles um, are broken down by enzymes in the uh, early part of the pupa stage. And uh, the muscles that wriggle the larval exoskeleton off um, are examples uh, there are certain muscles that are formed um, to help with the e-closure um, process, the basically getting out of the pupil cuticle and help expand the new cuticle. And as soon as the butterfly has gone through that emergence, um, those tissues break down as well right after that event. So. Uh, it's important to note that at no time do all the body parts break down um, and feed the formation of new body parts. Some do, some don't. There's never a completely just sort of liquid mushy phase during metamorphosis. About 24 hours before the adult butterfly is ready to emerge, uh, the chrysalis will change from green, get darker, and then become transparent so that you can see the orange and black and white coloration of the adult butterfly wings. Monarchs emerge or eclose, um, usually first thing in the morning. So you have to get up early to catch it, and it only takes about a minute or so, so it's easy to miss. So using those specialized muscles I was talking about and taking in air, um, the cuticle will uh, separate at weaker seams and the adult butterfly will crawl out. Um, the wings will be damp and wrinkled. And one of the first things that 
the butterfly does is to stick out its very long proboscis. And remember those two lines we saw on the chrysalis? Um, the proboscis actually, when they first emerge, is in two parts. And the butterfly, using um, just like microscopic muscles, has to fuse those two sides of uh, the proboscis together to form a tube or a straw through which the adult butterfly will drink um, nectar or other fluids. That's how they get their nourishment as an adult. The second thing the adult butterfly does is pump its wings and constrict its body to move uh, the insect version of blood called hemolymph um, into the veins of the wings to help them expand and then dry. So it's very important that they can hang freely even if the chrysalis is on the, the bottom or on the ground of the habitat. Um, as long as they can get their footing and climb up, let their wings hang down and it's important that they not touch anything um, to help them form and set correctly. They need to be hanging freely and they'll expand in a half hour or less and uh, then it takes about an hour or so for them to dry uh, and a few hours to be ready to take flight. So if those wings um, aren't allowed to expand um, they will dry wrinkled and the butterfly will be uh, deformed for the rest of its life and possibly not able to fly. So once you see them fluttering their wings, that means they're ready for release. And I just want to show you quickly how to know if you have a male or female monarch. So the males have narrower veins, which makes them overall appear lighter in color and they have um, expanded uh, hind wing spots that are uh, very characteristic. And then the females lack those spots and their veins tend to be thicker, giving them an overall darker appearance. So here's the beautiful female monarch that emerged at, uh, at the store. I was really excited to see her, uh, well-formed. Everything looks normal. She had beautiful wings, and you can see the um, chrysalis uh, hanging to her left there. During the whole time that uh, the chrysalis is developing, the insect can't excrete um, any sort of waste products. Those accumulate. So uh, you'll notice um, when your adult butterfly emerges that there's a reddish colored liquid. Um, and that is a nitrogenous waste uh, that has accumulated um, during metamorphosis. And that is called meconium. So that's totally normal. You can see that here on the screen um, where the chrysalis was. Adult butterflies, monarchs in particular, don't eat until about a day after they eclose or emerge. Uh, so if the weather's bad or stormy, it's okay to keep them overnight. And if it's uh, still not good weather, uh, try to feed them uh, before noon and again later in the day um, after they've emerged. So you can use the fully leaded Gatorade that has sugar. Um, no artificial sweeteners, uh, or a professional butterfly nectar with the right um, nutrients and salts in it. Um, and to first feed them, you'll have to gently uh, use a toothpick or a paper clip to unfurl that long proboscis, put it in the liquid so that they understand uh, they can eat without being um, on a flower. You should only have to do that once, um, and then they'll be able to move around and get food from um, a butterfly feeder you've provided or Gatorade-soaked um, cotton balls work well. Uh, and it's important to let them crawl on your hand to transfer them. You don't want to touch those wings, especially while they're... Um, still drying. So if you need to move them, make sure 
you let them crawl onto your hand to move them and that you had um, washed hands without any uh, chemicals on them. But once you see those wings really pumping, once they start flutter fluttering around uh, the habitats, you know they're ready to release. And if the weather's good, um, you can let them go, do their thing and breathe and lay more eggs in have more caterpillars in the landscape so we continue to have these beautiful butterflies. I hope that helps you understand the chrysalis development and e-closure process. And if you would like to learn more about monarch butterflies, check out Mondays with Martha number 8, 16, and 31. Take care and have a good week.